Bring the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I think Mike Sempervivi's here. He won't be Am needed for a while. Oh. Dude, this Rosh, everybody, it sucks. It's the worst show. If you don't want to hear this, like, go do something else. Go find a podcast. If it's out there, I mean, maybe you can listen to Bruce Pritchard's podcast. Uh, maybe there's one podcast out there that's going to tell you that the show was any good. But we're going to tell you the truth here on this show. The show sucked. One of the worst Raws I ever saw. Uh, atrocious in every way. There was literally... There were two good things on the show. One was a short video of Bianca Belair performing in the Performance Center and outdoing some dude. Okay? That was great. And then the other thing that was good, I don't even remember. I can't even remember off the top of my head what it was. Maybe as I go through this, I'll remember. But very quickly here, they announced that Retribution has signed with WWE. Retribution was destroying everything. They were running roughshod. They were doing whatever they wanted. And so in storyline, in order to solve this problem, WWE signed them to contracts where we are told they can do whatever they want. So we've gone from a group that was destroying WWE for free to a group that is now destroying WWE, and WWE is paying them to destroy the company. That's the storyline. Don't look at me. So, from there, they show up and they destroy a bunch of stuff, and we set up the Hurt Business versus Retribution for the main event. Hurt Business are heels, but they're fighting as baby faces in the main event tonight. We have Andrade and Angel, who broke up last week, Seth and Murphy, who broke up last week, and Dominic and Umberto Carrillo, who has been on main event for a month or two, losing. These three teams are in contention for the tag team titles against the Street Profits on Sunday. The Street Profits do commentary. They ask, who do you want to face? They say, well, we beat the other team. We beat Angel and Andrade multiple times. We like to face Umberto Carrillo and Dominic. So what happens? Andrade and Angel win. They will be facing the Street Profits for the 85th time on pay-per-view on Sunday. How could anybody want to see this match? We have multiple segments setting up Daba Kato and Braun Strowman, including Kevin Owens on the Kevin Owens show, invites his hated enemy, Shane McMahon, to be on the show so that Shane McMahon can promote his fight later on tonight. So Shane McMahon is on the Kevin Owens show, and he promotes his fight. Kevin Owens then calls out Braun Strowman. They don't fight because Shane won't let them fight. And in the middle of everybody arguing about whether or not they can fight, Alistair Black shows up and he crotches... Kevin Owens multiple times. Nobody in the ring sells it. Nobody in the ring acknowledges it. I have no idea why all these things are going on at the same time. And I guess this is setting up Kevin Owens and, and Alistair Black for Sunday. I presume. But I don't know. I don't think they made that that clear. Retribution's just beating up people backstage. It's the same thing they did last week. Now they're getting paid for it. They don't tell us who it is. I, I actually, they said it was like Humberto Carrillo and Titus O'Neil or something, but you can't tell because the camera's shaking up and down and backwards. A wretched segment. We have Keith Lee and Drew McIntyre. Now, last week, the stipulation was if Keith Lee wins and Randy Orton cannot compete, Keith Lee gets a shot at Drew McIntyre on Sunday. Well, they're doing this match and... Tom Phillips, uh, nobody has any idea what the stips are. Tom Phillips just keeps saying, this is for a shot at the title. Nobody knows what the actual stipulation is here. They have a boring match, and once again, we have a DQ when Randy hits the ring. Randy runs in, DQ finish. Eight matches for, for Keith Lee. He's won two. All the rest, it's been DQ, thrown out, count out, whatever. So, Randy Orton's back, so I don't even know why he had to attack anybody. It doesn't make any difference. Who cares? Orton then grinds the chair into... into uh, I, I've, I've killed Mike Sempervivi, apparently. He grinds the chair into Drew's face. He lays out Keith Lee with the punt. Like, Keith Lee's dead. I don't even know why anybody would care about Keith Lee anymore. 
Orton does a promo, and he vows to win the belt at the pay-per-view. That was actually okay. One of the only other good things on the show. Payton and Billy, who broke up two weeks ago, the storyline now is they're not a team, but they're friends. Payton turned on Billy. They had a match together. Now they're just friends again, but they're not allowed to team. And Peyton challenges Asuka for later on tonight. We then have a number one contenders match. Mickey James, who tapped out last night or last week to Asuka, she faces Zelina, the manager, to determine the number one contender at the pay per view. Zelina beats Mickey clean in the middle of the ring. It is now Zelina, the manager, versus Asuka for the. Does anybody care about this match? Anybody? Raise your hand. Then we had the Bianca thing, which was cool. Then, I guess, Tozawa got eaten by a shark. But, like, I watched the whole thing. I have no idea what's going on. Dave explained that he got eaten by a shark. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I mean, who cares? MVP and Cedric come out. This leads to Cedric versus Apollo. Apollo beats Cedric. Now Apollo will be facing Lashley at the pay-per-view for the title. But, in case you cared at all... The Hurt Business beats the hell out of Apollo and Ricochet for the 55th time on this show. Every single week. How could you possibly care about this match on Sunday? No, this was the only other good thing on the show. Dolph Ziggler versus Arturo Huas for two minutes on Raw Underground. It was the best match on the show and nothing came close. Ziggler taps the guy out. Seth then comes out for an excruciatingly long segment. Where he's got papers. It proves that Dominic is not Ray's son. Ray and the family come out and Ray says, Bro, we did this 15 years ago. Like, can you have anything else for us here? And so, Seth, who has DNA papers, which he claims prove that Dominic is not Ray's son, he just changes his tune and says, You know, maybe it's, maybe it's actually your daughter that's not your daughter. Ray's like, Dude, come on. This is stupid. Stop bringing my daughter into this. She's 19 and she's naive. She doesn't understand the business. Now she's mad. She storms off. This leads later to Alistair or, or Buddy Murphy, who's almost 30, going backstage and like they're doing a romance with him and a 19-year-old girl. I guess we're supposed to get into that. And she's all awkward and he's all awkward and away they go. So then we have Eric getting killed by Riddick Moss at Raw Underground. This poor guy. I mean, he needs either he needs to either get injured or his partner needs to come back soon because they're going to kill this dude. Peyton with Billy as friends faces Asuka in a terrible match. Zelina just runs in for the DQ. Every match that went more than two minutes had a horrible finish on this show. And then in the main event, it is the Hurt Business heals working as baby faces to face Slap Jack, who is Shane Thorne, T-Bar, who is Dominic Dijakovic, and Mace, who is not a character from Star Wars. It's actually Dio Madden. And they go in there, and they have a match, and as God is my witness, the finish is Lashley puts... The full Nelson on Slap Jack. And T-Bar on the outside punches Lashley, which in this case does not count as a save. It is the illegal man touching the legal man in a tag team match. It's a disqualification to which Tom Phillips screams, illegal man makes contact with the legal man. I told you about this rule six months ago when they did this on another show. And I had all these people on Reddit explaining that that's not actually the rule. Brian doesn't know what he's talking about. I got that straight from an agent. And they did the same damn finish last night. So don't even tell me it's not a rule. It's a rule that they rarely enforce, but it's a rule. And it sucks. And I don't know how I made it through that whole segment without swearing and getting us kicked off the air. One of the worst Raws of all time... This should be a chapter in a book. And we'll be back in a moment with more on Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs> 